She-Hulk has just ended, and I figured it'd be as good a time as any to come out with a video ranking these Marvel Disney Plus shows from least favorite to my favorite. We're well ingrained into this era of Marvel Disney Plus shows, starting, you know, early last year with WandaVision and now up to and including She-Hulk. We have several now, so I'm going to go ahead and rank them from least favorite to my favorite based on my personal preference anyway. I know I've been asked before about ranking all of the MCU properties, you know, movies and shows, but I figure shows is a different medium and storytelling than movies provide, so it's not fair to rank all of them together. So this will just be the Marvel Disney Plus shows. Obviously, this is only phase four right now, so sit back, relax, and I hope you enjoy yeah, I guess it'll be controversial to have this ranked where I do here, but calm your ass down and I'll explain. Now, I think Loki got off to a great start. You know, in those first few episodes where you still have that villainous Loki personality, his interactions with Owen Wilson, just the weirdness of the story and the mission, I just thought it made for some great entertainment in those first few episodes. But with there only being six episodes here, in my opinion, this show had two episodes that I just thought were not very good. The first one was episode three, which is the first one where he's alone with Sylvie on the mission on the purple planet. In my opinion, that episode was just very fillerish. Not a lot happened. And that episode was just like, like, what was that? It's just very short and just not a very good episode. But then things picked up again with episode four. But then you got to episode five, which is a lot of people's favorite episode, the episode where he's with the variants of himself. But in my opinion, that episode was just kind of meandering also. It's just like, what is this episode? It's cool to have some fun Easter eggs here and there, but as an episode in terms of its structure, its quality and whatnot, I just didn't think it was very good. That and the combination of the cliffhangerous nature of the ending of the show and just some other stuff here and there. And unfortunately, for those reasons and a few more, I have to put it where I have it on this ranking. She-Hulk had a level of comedic dialogue and tone unlike any other MCU property and led to some truly entertaining stuff when all the elements were working. Its fourth wall breaking gimmick, which actually is from the She-Hulk comics, was taken full advantage of here and led to for some truly iconic stuff. I mean, that finale has to be seen to believe it is that crazy. When the show was on point, I was definitely really enjoying it, especially in those first few episodes where the quality was definitely consistently high, at least for me anyway. It's a shame the series suffered what I consider to be a three episode slump, episodes five, six, and seven, where those episodes were very, very fillerish, not very good, and the quality just was not there. Had those episodes just been solid, I would have this ranked much higher, because when the show was working, it was definitely working and was a blast to watch. I don't think anyone would ever accuse Hawkeye of being a great show, but I think the down to earth kind of nature of the show when it came to the story and the scale really shows they understood the kind of vibes the show should give off with who its main character and hero was. That and I really loved the introduction of Kate Bishop here, I thought she was great. And the show had some nice surprises of its own, mainly the introduction of Kingpin into the proper MCU story, it was great to see him again. Looking back at it, the only sort of really big flaw I see here was the inclusion of Yelena Belova. Now, don't get me wrong, I thought she was great when she was there, but I just thought her reasons for being there, her being so bloodthirsty, guns blazing, going in to kill Hawkeye, without properly asking him what the hell happened between him and her sister at the end endgame, uh, not very good writing, in fact, pretty bad writing, but overall, I thought the show was fine, it was mostly fun, and it did give us a nice MCU special to watch during the holiday season. I feel Miss Marvel was at its best in those first few episodes where it was kind of emulating the kind of vibes Shazam did from a few years ago, where you're seeing sort of a teenager's perspective of the larger superhero universe, with the kind of conversations they would have, the kind of Avengers cons, it was a lot of fun stuff. And it was fun to see Kamala come into her own and become that sort of nighttime trending superhero that you would see on social media. The show's sort of kind of weak point came towards the middle of the show with the whole villain plot. Uh, that villain plot and those villains specifically, uh, they were boring, they were yawn inducing, not very interesting, and they were just they were just weak. They really just got in the way of the show. Thankfully, those villains were out of the way for the finale of the show where things got back on track and it was a very good finale. And the show gave us a nice tease of some stuff to come in the very near future. It would have been very easy for the Falcon and the Winter Soldier to go in the direction of him, Sam Wilson, immediately starting off with the shield and as Captain America, him and Bucky fighting crime or terrorists, you know, that kind of stuff. 
But no, I'm very glad it did not go in that direction. And instead, it told a story of Sam Wilson having self-doubt, you know, thinking, is he worthy of that shield and that title as Captain America? Him having to earn it to where when he ultimately does and becomes Captain America, it's just beautiful to watch because he really did earn that title. I surprisingly really did, really did also like John Walker's arc in this to where you immediately hate the guy, by the, but by the end, it's like, you know what? I actually kind of like this guy and I'm glad things ended up working out for him. And I also really did like the inclusion and in seeing some MCU characters we hadn't seen in a decent bit with Sharon Carter and then Baron Zemo and his whack ass dancing. All of this was held together by them perfectly using the same tone seen in Captain America The Winter Soldier. For my money, that is the best non-Avengers MCU film, and it worked perfectly for the tone of this series. Moon Knight's story can be pretty overwhelming for a first-time viewer. In fact, it overwhelmed me. Just because when I was watching it, I didn't understand it. There was just so much weird shit going on. In watching it the second time, I was definitely able to better appreciate the story, the structure, the trippiness and just the fantastic performance from Oscar Isaac. I mean, what he did in portraying both Mark and Steven, brilliant stuff. And those scenes where the two were together and interacting in the same physical plane, just amazing stuff. And one of the best performances we've ever seen in the MCU. I got way more out of Marvel's What If than I initially anticipated. These scenarios that they came up, these what if scenarios, were all handled really well for the most part. You had the amazingly tragic ending of the Doctor Strange one, the hilarity of Party Thor, and just the feel-good great nature of the Tatala Star-Lord episode. Just so much great stuff, not even to mention the great trippiness horror element of the zombie episode. But then things got taken up to a whole nother level towards the end of the series with the introduction of Vision Ultron, who Ultron in Age of Ultron, the movie from 2015, was a solid villain. He was okay enough. But then this episode took him to a whole nother level to where you're like, holy shit. And then your series finale where all of these stories come together in one big climactic epic final battle. Not what I anticipated from the series, but my God, was it spectacular to witness and made it definitely a series worth watching. And I can't miss one for Marvel fans. WandaVision has a variety of elements that earn it the top spot on this list. The format of the show made it an absolute blast to watch. Seeing these different eras of TV play out, where you start off in the 50s and it moves to the 60s, then to color in the 70s, etc., etc., into the modern day with its office like episode. These scenarios, these TV like scenarios in Wanda's life, were hilarious to watch and then had really clever writing that just made every single episode so much fun to see how these eras of TV would play out. Then you had the mystery element of the show, where the show starts off not really telling you exactly what's going on. You start off in the 50s and so like, where is this scenario with Wanda and Vision? Where is this going? Then information slowly gets to be revealed to where it all comes together in the end. I also think that this show managed to pull off the twist villain brilliantly. I highly doubt many people knew who Agatha Harkness was from the comics, Wanda's one of the enemies from the Marvel comics, but the show's writing was so good to where they made it work, even though many people obviously did not know who Agatha was. Just the writing and the development, everything came together brilliantly. And then the show actually finally gave us the ultimate payoff to the actual Scarlet Witch, with Wanda being in several shows and movies before this, and then actually seeing her become the Scarlet Witch, the development there, the finale, the fun stuff the show had, the introduction of Quicksilver, the different version of Quicksilver from the X-Men films. All the elements came together to make a great show, a great start for the Marvel shows, and it's earned the top spot for my list for Marvel Disney Plus shows. So there you have it with my ranking of all of these Marvel Disney Plus shows. So far, I really enjoy the intertwining of these stories they're doing with the TV shows and the films with stuff like how WandaVision sets up her character in, in Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness and then how the ending of Miss Marvel ties into the next Captain Marvel movie and stuff like how in Black Widow, Yelena Bologna, you see her, what happens to her at the end and that leads to Hawkeye. I really enjoy that kind of stuff and not sort of uh, making babysitting people who are not watching the shows. If Marvel fans are going to watch the shows, then reward them with some storytelling that you'll see in the movie. And obviously not every show I think is great, at least not so far, but I still like the stuff we're doing so far and hopefully more good content is to come.
So that'll do it for this video. If you made it to the end of uh, this rankings, thank you for watching.